Welcome back, folks. It's Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. Born on this date in 1947, the Hughes Corporation singer Ann Kelly of Fairfield. Who remembers Rock the Boat? Rock on with your bad self. In 1994, actor, singer, dancer Jordan Fisher of Birmingham. Today, we have national politics, state politics, a highway tragedy, and a popular annual ranking of schools. My name is Ike Morgan, and we are down in Alabama. The U.S. Senate easily passed the $95 billion package that will send war aid to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, as well as humanitarian efforts, reports the Associated Press. Now, it's already been through the House of Representatives. Senators passed it 79 to 18, and President Joe Biden is expected to sign it today. Senator Katie Britt, an Alabama Republican, voted to pass the bill. The most contentious part of the bill, among some on the right, was the aid to Ukraine. Britt's vocal support of the package leaned into the money for Israel, the part of the spending that will go toward missile production in our state, and an additional bill in the package that forces a Chinese company to sell TikTok in order to keep it from being banned in the states. Senator Tommy Tuberville, also an Alabama Republican, did not vote. He said through social media that, quote, I haven't voted for a dime of Ukraine funding, and I'm not going to start now. A driver was killed this week on I-65 in Gardendale when an object hit his windshield, reports AL.com's Carol Robinson. The object is being described as a small metal beam, and authorities think it came off of or out of another vehicle. They're asking anyone with information on where the beam came from or what kind of vehicle it fell from to call state troopers at 205-322-4691. Now, although we can't say at this point what caused the fatality, this could also serve as a cautionary tale to make sure everything is secured on and in your vehicle. I've seen a large, heavy-duty metal rake that was stored vertically in the back of a truck lift up and out of its rack like an umbrella and come down like a spear right between my truck and another. Now, again, we don't know for sure that this tragedy went down exactly like that. The victim in Monday's I-65 incident was driving a Ford Bronco. Jason H. Fields was 41 years old. U.S. News & World Report has released its 2024 rankings of public high schools, reports AL.com's Willisha Morris. Now we're going to give you Alabama's top 10 here. Number one, Loveless Academy Magnet Program High School in Montgomery. It repeated as the state's number one and is Alabama's only public high school among the top 100 in the nation at number 21. Number two is New Century Technology High School, Huntsville City Schools. That's another magnet school up from number four last year. Number three, Homewood High School was the top traditional high school in the state. Number four, Mountain Brook High School was the highest ranking STEM school at number 87 in the nation. Number five, Vestavia Hills High School. Number six, James Clemens High. Number seven, Spain Park High. Eight, Hewitt Trustful. Nine, Brubaker Tech Magnet. And 10, Oak Mountain High School in Shelby County. We'll mention three pieces of legislation making a move on Goat Hill. First, AL.com's Mike Kaysen reports that the Alabama House of Representatives passed a bill that would make an exception to a 2011 state law keeping those in the country illegally from enrolling in state community colleges or public four-year colleges. Now, such non-citizens could enroll if either they attended an Alabama high school for at least three years and graduated or earned a GED or completed other equivalent education or if they have applied for lawful presence in the U.S. That that bill's from Reed Ingram, a Pike Road Republican, and is moving to the Senate. Now, the House also passed a bill that would expand through 8th grade the state's ban on teachers leading classroom discussion on sexual orientation or gender identity that the state's standards do not consider age or developmentally appropriate. That one's from Mac Butler, a Rainbow City Republican. And one more, the bill to move back the deadline for political parties to certify nominees for president and vice president 
has unanimously passed the Senate and is headed to the House. Now, that's the bill that would clear the way for President Biden to legally be on Alabama's ballot this November. The bill is from Merica Coleman, a Pleasant Grove Democrat. Thank y'all so much for listening. We're going to be back here tomorrow. As always, y'all come by anytime you want to and see what we're doing on the internet at AL.com. Bye.